So the snow is getting worse, and I've just arrived to where I'm going to be staying in Resikne. And this is it, right in the city center. And there aren't very many modern buildings here, so it's your typical five-story Soviet construction. And look at this. How this works. It's a bit old-fashioned. Oh boy. Let's see. Third floor. Now in these countries, ground floor counts as one. So third floor is going up two levels. So that was one. This is two. Talk about authentic, huh? This is the true authentic experience. And let's see. Which one is it? Good old fashioned Russian key. That makes no sense whatsoever. Just scratches everything in your pockets. Now let's see what we get for about 35 euros in Rezekne for a night. Let's get some lights on because otherwise with the snow let's do the traditional thing and remove our shoes right at the door. So it's basically a one room studio flat it's got TV, internet, a small kitchen, and let's investigate the bathroom. This will do fine. <clears throat> so I just left the apartment and decided to investigate the town a little bit. And let me tell you, it's cold. And when I left Riga, there was absolutely no snow. And I'm walking around in tennis shoes, no grip, slipping all over the place. This is going to be exciting. Oh. Which way? Hey, buddy, do you speak English? А вы на английском говорите? Нет, я только на русском. А центр города это где? Это вот там, где огромная статуя, где ага. держит ту крест. Понятно, спасибо. Пожалуйста. До свидания. Магазин? Да, маме. Что покупаешь? Жвачка. Жвачка? А, -а, а, нравится? Как тебя зовут? Вадим. Вадим? Да. Я Джастин. А ты из Резакна? Я из Резакна. Я это будет челлендж, чтобы ходить в этом городе в этих шутках. Но посмотрим, что происходит. Now the kid said the center's that way. I'm hoping he's right. Because it's cold right now. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm walking and my feet are just sliding behind me. Maybe if I walk in, ah oh, yeah, more solid snow. Here we go. That makes more sense. So right here in the center of Rezekne, behind me is a monument. One of the most famous monuments in Latvia. And it was erected in the 1930s, I think 1939, to commemorate the reunification of this area, Latgale, to the rest of Latvia, as well as the independence of Latvia. And during the times of the Russians, obviously, they did away with that back in the 1940s. And then the Germans took over again, and the people put it back. And then the Soviets came back, 
and they got rid of it again. Only this time nobody could find the statue, so in the 90s they erected this one, which is a replica of the original. Now, what's interesting is that the lady there at the top of the statue, her name is Mara, and she's the goddess of motherhood and fertility. She's a pagan goddess, and she's holding a Catholic crucifix. Now, because of the proximity of the Russian border here and the Lithuanian border and the Belarus border, the predominant religion in this area is not Lutheran like the rest of the country, but more Catholic and Russian Orthodox. And just over there, we have a Catholic church, a very beautiful one, as I might, I might say. And over here, a Russian Orthodox church that looks amazing in the snow. It's just something out of Dr. Zhivago. It's so impressive. Now, the history here doesn't end with the Latvians, the Catholics, or the Russian Orthodox. But what's missing on this square, I think, because of the history of this part of the world, is a synagogue. Because up until the Second World War, there were times when the population of this region was as much as 60% Jewish. They had a very strong influence in this part of the world mainly because of restrictions in Russia that wouldn't allow Jews to settle in certain areas. And these parts of the world were very friendly towards Jews up until the Second World War, where unfortunately, practically all of Latvian Jews perished either here or were sent to camps all over Europe to meet their fate. And with the Russian populace here being still very strong, and the Catholic populace being just as strong, it's obvious why there wouldn't be a synagogue here right now because it would be empty. However, I hear that there is one, one very old synagogue still left. And I'm gonna try and find it. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Вы опять сегодня? А как? Мы каждый день работаем. Каждый день? Да. А что, у вас свой тротуар? Вы это кусок делаете или как? Не, этот тротуар с этой стороны, с той стороны остановка. И вот памятник во все четыре стороны. И около костела, и туда еще. И эти проходы. Все это мое. И каждый день вы это делаете? Каждый Сколько день. раз вы это делаете в день? Ну, чтобы честно было. Окей, ну окей, сейчас будет снег опять, надо еще раз. Сколько часов? Не считайте. Не считайте, да? Да. Интересно. Тяжелая работа, нет? Ну а что поделать? Мы женщины сильные. Сильные женщины здесь, Латвии, а? Все, спасибо, до свидания. Whether you go to Ukraine, Russia, or whatever, you'll see the women shoveling the snow off the, off the uh, pavement. She said, men don't like this kind of work. I can't imagine anybody likes this kind of work, but it's really weird that it's mainly the men. Oh, the women, rather. And, uh, yeah, she does it all day long. And she said that it's because Latvian women are strong. So as I'm walking along here, I noticed a few things that I want to share with you. If you see that cartoon character up there, that is the Soviet version of Winnie the Pooh, who looks like nothing like the one we have in the West. But that's Soviet Winnie Pooh, as they call him. есть арарат что еще есть виски можно 50 грамм арарат this warm up with uh, a 
bit of cognac because this is freezing out there, absolutely freezing. Thank you. Anyway, guys, warm up the bones a little bit. 50 grams of uh, Ararat cognac. By the way, did you know that this apparently was Winston Churchill's favorite cognac? Stalin gifted it to him in Yalta. And um, apparently after that, he shipped him a load. But I can understand why. So we're going over a bridge. And this sign here says Rezekne, which is the town we're in. But I didn't know it was also the name of a river. So there's the town of Rezekne and the river Rezekne. How gorgeous is this today? Centrale Bazar. Oh, today he works at this bazaar. Bazaar today is not working. Today is a Friday, but he works at least until half an hour. До часа. Да, и там рядом зеленая синагога. Отлично, спасибо большое. Пожалуйста. Взаимно, спасибо. So we're in luck. She told me where the synagogue is, which is what I want to see next. She said that it's right next to the central market. And you know me, I like my markets. So let's go and have a look. So on my way to the market and the synagogue, I was walking behind the Russian Orthodox Church and I came across this monument. And I don't know if you can see it from there. Having my coffee, by the way. And it's, it dates 1979 to 1989 with a soldier holding what appears to be a Kalashnikov or an AK-47. And a list of names and dates. And that corresponds with the war in Afghanistan and these people were probably the ones from this town that perished and if you notice right here in the surrounding fence of the church you can still find the star the famous Soviet star well I don't know if you can see how deep this snow is. It's just been snowing non-stop. So I've come across this monument and it says 1941 to 1945, which is the dates of the Great Patriotic War, what we call the Second World War. And this is a monument that is here to commemorate the soldiers, the Latvian soldiers that fought on the Soviet side. And it's a very Soviet looking statue. I mean, look at that. that typical, really chiseled, as I always say, in the jawline. You know, whenever I see one of these, I can't help but think of Ivan Drago that fought Rocky, the Russian. You know, that, that really strong jaw. And, uh, and yeah, even though it's Soviet, you know, I think it's great that it stays up because at the end of the day, it is history and it does represent the, the history and the truth of a lot of Latvians that fought in this war. Maybe unwillingly, but nevertheless they sacrificed a lot. And uh, I think it's a great thing that today we're still able to see these things. And I would love to stick around and look more, but it's minus 14 degrees right now. It's absolutely freezing. The snow is so deep that Loads of it went into my boots and I need to find a dry place to remove my shoes, shake out the snow and uh, keep looking for the synagogue. But anyways, let's keep moving. So right here by the river, I've come across this little part that's so 
different to the rest of the city. Really old looking houses, wooden houses. You know, with knowing the Jewish history in this area, it's actually reminiscent of a scene from Fiddle on the Roof. You can only imagine. Fabia pulling his cow along. I've just walked past the bus station on my way. Look at this fantastic mural. It has a Jewish theme to it, and I kind of feel like we might be getting into what was the Jewish quarters. Looks like we're on the right track. Yeah, that shop selling Jewish artifacts there. And if you see that, Israelis Yella, which I guess is Israel Street. Oh, I think it might be that green building over there. It's known as the Green Synagogue. Let's go and take a look. Ah. Uh, do you speak English? Ой, но... Русский? Ну, русский можно, да. А я хотел увидеть синагога. Можно? Две ну, минутки. Можно. Мне просто... Мы сегодня закрыты, но у меня была группа только. А откуда вы? Я из Англии. О. Ну, пожалуйста, зайдите. Спасибо, спасибо. We're in, guys. They let us into the synagogue. And look. We didn't go too far to see the fiddler. Вау! Это мужской зал. Да. Мужчины заходили вот в дверь, женщины заходили тут. Вот шкаф тоже. Вау! Вот у нас вся Тора. Это э, нам подарили шесть лет тому назад Рижская хоральная синагога. Потому что у нас была Тора, но все свитки Торы украли в советское время, взломали синагогу плохие люди. Ау. И только вот один свиток, вот этот, это книга Эстер. А. Вот э, мы нашли на чердаке. Знаете, что вот там воры не попали, вот в этом футляре было. Вот. Мы ее не трогаем. А здесь что это, нашли знаете, здесь? Что? Вот мы когда меняли пол, это очень интересное место, меняли пол нашли вот это углубление. Это место, где евреи хоронили старые некошерные свитки, а -а -а. книги обветшалые, которые Дефиниция. Гениза называется, Гениза. И мы здесь сделали стекло, мы экспонируем, показываем, что такое вот Гениза. Да. Вот мы нашли вот эти старые молитвенники вот там. Именно там? Да, но у нас еще есть другие старые. Вот видите, где печатали книги Вильнюс. Вильнюс в 1876 да. году. Да, да, да. Ну, это были, э, у нас еще есть и другие. Да. Типография там была. Там э, наши евреи восточной Латвии были связаны с Вильнюс. Это, э, Вильнюс – это столица Литвы. Но там было много евреев, там был Раввинат. Ну, раввинат это как бы, ну... Да. У нас разные функции. Одна функция, мы для туристов, потом мы делаем концерты клязьмерской музыки, делаем дни еврейской кухни. А вот еще одна Тора, вот на, на пяти языках, эту под этом иллюстрацией Марка Шагала. Это Шагал, да? Это и внутри есть. И внутри. Это Витебский его родина, это Беларусь. Угу. Недалеко отсюда, кстати. Ну, 300 километров. So I've just been told that there are about 62-63 Jews left in Rezekne. Now this is in comparison to before the war in 1937. 
the statistic was approximately 3,000 of them. So they were about 25% of the population at the time. And a few years before that, during the 19th century, whilst the Russian Empire was here, the count was, went as high as 6,000 Jews. And today, this is the last synagogue of the 12 synagogues that were here. So if they had 12 synagogues, you can imagine that they had a very, very strong presence here in Rezekne. And this lady here, who is playing on the video, this is uh, Rochelle Kukla, and she is a survivor of the war and the oldest Jew in Rezekne. Все, до свидания, спасибо большое. Mission accomplished. So uh, we got to see the last remaining synagogue in all of Rezekne. That's not necessarily still a synagogue, but still operational in the sense that you can visit it, you can see it, you can see how it was is uh, is fantastic so whew. i tell you what it is freezing see i told you it's always the ladies hi ladies how are you always the ladies that are doing the floor sweeping here the the, the snow shoveling is done by ladies i've yet to see a fella doing that So I decided to take the bus because it is ridiculously cold out there. And this is much warmer. Hey you, understand everybody keep your help. You, you, me, the go, cover me and sing your song. <laughs> no, Scotch. Scotch. Scotch group. That's group Scotch apparently. <laughs> Must be his band. I like you music like? now. <laughs> He's the man. You <laughs> see, Cage, my life now. CC Cage. CC Cage. Oh. You Sandra. Sandra. Sandra, I like you, my daughter, Sandra. Ah. We Sandra music, Sandra. Yes, very good. Sandra. Maria is Magdalena. Cage. Maria Magdalena. Magdalena, Magdalena yes. Yeah. Yeah. Opa. On what country do you fly? England. England? My daughter, England, uh, study. Ciao, my friend. Bye bye. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Well, I'll tell you what. Although Rezekne is an old city, I mean, it's as Soviet as they get. You can't get much more Soviet looking than this. Look at this. Must be for the cat that lives here. On the first floor. They've built it a little ladder. That's so cool. <laughs> but it's an old city with such a Soviet feel to it. And that's mainly because, you know, during the war. You say during the war, what's more? between the Germans and the Russians, they pretty much flatten this place. And, uh, you know, walking along here, you, you know, you could wake someone up in this place and transport them to another place in Russia or Belarus, and it would be identical. It's really strange. There's actually a film about it. Uh, a Russian film that dates back from the, the Soviet times and they play it every New Year. It's called Slokim Parim, which means with light 
steam, I guess, which is what Russians say to each other after a sauna. And it plays every single year in, uh, in New Year on Russian television. And the whole idea is that there's this guy looking for an address in, uh, in St. Petersburg, I think it is. And it turns out that he was looking for an address in a different city, but all the street names were the same, all the buildings look the same, and it really feels like that here. But anyways, Rezekne, fantastic day. If I had to summarize it, I'd say it was like a film set. You know, from being transported into the Soviet Union, I mean, completely immersed, to having this Dr. Zhivago moment when you saw the Russian Orthodox Church in the snow, to Fiddler on the Roof and the Jewish heritage here that is so rich yet so unapparent, it's no longer existent. And finally, let's not forget Winnie the Pooh, Winnie Pooh. Um, you know, you show a, a person that grew up in the Soviet Union a picture of a yellow Winnie the Pooh and they'll say, no, 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 that's not Winnie the Pooh. So, once again, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And yes, we didn't see the market, unfortunately. And you know how much I like my markets. But what I always say is if you didn't have enough time to do any, everything, that's not so bad because it gives you another excuse to come back and do it. So, Rezekne, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. At any rate, enjoy your journey.